15 red, red flags, flags are pretty in a VTuber to industry in agency. Sorry. Unfortunately, most people are colorblind. Um, it can be quite difficult to tell that a certain company is good or legit, especially if you're a VTuber that wants the support of a company but may be rejected too many times by the big agencies, or perhaps aiming that high is a little too daring for you and you'd like to first get comfortable and build your skill sets and network. Whatever the reason you have to want to join a small or new agency, fact of the matter is there are some things you need to watch out for. The thing about micro corpos and small agencies is that they can't offer a lot of the stuff big agencies can but also has the chances that it will collapse or have bad management that can screw you over mentally. I'm here to provide you- Honestly, if you're gonna think about joining an agency, literally look who's there and look how many people have graduated recently. And if it's more than three, it's most likely a red flag with some insight but let's continue if you have more to add do put it in the description down below this is the red flags you need to watch out for in a vtuber agency in the english side at least because jp has an entirely different culture everything in this video will be under the assumption that one is thinking of joining a certain small corpo or a micro corpo or is still in the talking stages with the ceo or management or hr so a lot of these flags may only become apparent once you get some insight into their operations However, I'd just like to clarify that red flags shouldn't be an automatic turnoff. No agency is perfect, and every agency has its fair share of red flags. It I mean, like, yeah, but three red flags, I think, makes it a stop sign. And at that point, you probably shouldn't go. It just has to do with how many there are, what red flags you can tolerate, and what are non-negotiable for you. Just because an agency may have one or three red flags doesn't mean that they are a bad agency. But first, let's talk about red flags that are first seen on the surface, the ones that you notice when you first come across them. Red flag number one, they don't have a website or a company email or isn't registered in whatever country they're in. If a v That's actually a pretty good red flag. That's no, that's 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 a pretty good one. That's a pretty good one. Launched without a website. That's a pretty good one. OS, contact information and what have you's, or they aren't registered or doesn't have a company email, this gives the presumption that a VTuber agency aren't taking the necessary steps to legalize or officialize themselves. Understandable for a short while if they are new, but if they're old, maybe don't. It questions their commitment, intentions, and their ability to be able to fund their agency, or hell, even protect their talents. It's even greener of a flag when the skeleton team of the agency themselves are on LinkedIn, and you can check their profiles or- LinkedIn and Glassdoor release. Good. In fact, this is kind of a Those are have. two really good This is ones. the least a company can do to make themselves look legit. So if you're looking at an agency and they don't have these or aren't currently working on it, maybe start asking questions. Red flag number two. The CEO has no successful or good business experience or has no passion for content creating. If they have both, that's the best. If they have none, run away. I have this thing where if an agency pops up and I'm fascinated by them, I try to look over the staff and the people behind it because I like to study them and see where it leads. And from what I've gathered, a CEO has to either have a business experience or likes to create content to at least have a VTuber agency that won't collapse in less than a year or have a big bad drama be the last breath of the agency. Not having one of these elements is fine since you can just hire someone that can do it. If you're purely a businessman, you can hire someone that's in the know with the general industry to guide you and help you make informed decisions. And to also keep your business sociopathy in check, just in case you decide to want to screw over some talents over their contract. If you're not a businessman, but is or was a passionate content creator, you can hire someone to form a business plan with your creative input. You'd be surprised how many VTuber agencies lack these elements. I've seen some CEOs that have negative business experience or content creating experience. We can only speculate why they made an agency in the first place. That's kind of course, funny. I'm not saying that this will guarantee that the agency is going to be a success. Yeah, yeah well, I, I think they definitely should have at least a little bit of knowledge when it comes down to content creation, since the whole business side of uh, it, it, like their whole business of a VTuber company is entertainment. So if they have literally zero knowledge when it comes to entertainment, how can they effectively successfully run somebody in entertainment if they don't know what's entertaining or what the masses deem entertaining anyway especially in a subgenre or a sub uh, a subculture that is vtubing right like the subculture of anime i feel like vtubing is one of those things so 
if they don't know anything about anime, especially if they don't know anything about VTuber culture, like there's a big chance that they're going to flop because they don't know anything about what the fans like. Yes, a lot of uh, luck is needed yeah. to make the algorithm notice you. And unfortunately, luck is mostly an uncontrollable factor. You could do everything and still fail. So with a CEO or management like this, you at least can expect that even if you fail, you'll still have a reliable network and you've managed to give yourself some experience, growth, new friends, something you can put on your resume for the next VTuber agency you can apply to. No abuse, no traumatizing incidents, at least I hope have, not. I, have you missed? Just Red to... flag number three, shitty fucking models. Look, I'm not saying every agency should go for the big artists like Paco, Lam, Azur, or even employ cracked riggers like Brian or Kefi, but at least think up of a character design that actually looks good or hire designers, competent artists, and a rigger that can actually help one execute that design. I know art and design has a bit of subjectivity to it. There are some design choices that is pleasant to the talents and the agency itself, but may not be pleasing to the general audience. Well, that I'll just say this. If the V2 models, when they move, if it doesn't look natural, then there it is. That's like the basic thing we could say, hey, whenever they're moving their mouth, their mouth doesn't move correctly. Or whenever they smile, their smile looks weird. Or it brings an uncanny valley is to the, to the model. So like that, that could be a simple one, like pretty basic. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about models that look like they just got a 12 year old who just discovered anime to draw the models for them for 50 bucks a piece because they wanted to massively skimp out on artists. The quality of the model and the character design is one of the first few factors that will make anyone decide to check you out. But I do get it, everything's a lot more expensive now, artists and riggers and asset makers have become a lot more expensive compared to what they were 2-3 to three years ago. Composers and mixers too. As a CEO or business owner in the scene, that's a bit of a headache, especially because a lot of them will often ghost you if you're not one of the more well-known agencies. But you gotta roll with it if you want to look competent. One can't start a VTuber agency with a mere 20,000 bucks as a startup capital anymore. If you intend to start a VTuber agency and don't have that much money- It's literally just the end. Maybe don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I mean, Nosaji is a PNG tuber, so I mean, he can get away with it. Not much money to begin with. Maybe don't. That money is better used elsewhere. Red flag number four. Social media account is literally dead. Isn't doing anything to an active social talents or their activity, and their website is yeah. not updated. I'm yeah. not saying that they should be engaging with the talents literally every day or making posts 24 7. But if their social media platform aren't engaging with the talents or giving out updates like the schedule of it the should get at least yeah fun events, at least should be updates. Or interacting with the community, then they don't have a social media manager or a marketing guy. If a VTuber agency's official social media account has massive gaps of inactivity, that might be a sign that management doesn't care or nobody is getting paid enough to do it or just doesn't know what to do. Red flag number five, some talents left just a few weeks or months after they debuted. I now, there are circumstances great. where this could Shout out Millie at the bottom left. left. Maybe the talent right after they signed with an agency probably got into an accident or had some changes in their personal life that made them incapable of continuing as a VTuber under the agency. But more often than not, such as the case with Waktor, this is literally a sign of management disaster behind the scenes or unfair contracts. It's defensible if it's a one-time thing. Because there are several cases where a VTuber or two just are very difficult to work with. But multiple instances? Nah mate, run away. Red flag number 6. The talent's PL accounts are more active than the agency account. This is a personal thing and is also leaning more to- uh, Yeah, I, I would say so as well. I would say so as well, yeah. Because if you get hired by an agency, you know, you should be working with the agency. But if you're more active on your PL, and especially if you're more popular on your PL, and it's like, what's the point of even joining the organization to begin with? Towards the taboo slash forbidden side of the industry, it's also something of a case by case. At this point, is P are PLs even still taboo? I feel like they're not after the whole Niji Sanji shit and the Doki Bird and like even having Regis Altair and Axel play with Doki on their PL accounts. It's like, and everybody following each other on their PL accounts. Uh, Quinn left Niji Sanji and now uh, we just saw him on False ID. We see Palmu all the time. 
I, you know, I, I'm starting to think like that this taboo is not, it's, I think it's, at this point, it's probably pointless. Um, unless it's still like the creator or themselves are still like saying, hey, we're not doing anything on PL or whatever, or if they request that. Basis. Mm. Obviously, it's a good thing when the VTuber agencies don't. Yeah, have like if they don't want their PL share, that yeah, then yeah, okay, then that I feel like that's just you know privacy. You know, if people don't want their PLs shown, it could just be privacy. Like, but a taboo of saying, "Oh, this was Rosami. It like uh, this is Rosami now, and this was Rosami when she was this character." Is different between, you know, this is Rosami. Oh, Rosemi said that she doesn't want anybody to know about her her PL account. You know, they don't really say anything about it. Exclusivity clauses and stop their talents from being active in their PL accounts. Sometimes VTubers just. Oh, also, if they're active on their PL account, like fairly active on their PL account, it's almost like saying, "Hey, like you don't really care." Like, especially if you're still doing VTuber stuff on the PL account that you're not doing with your Corpo account, it's like. Eh. Uh, I don't know. I don't wants know. to chill in their PL accounts uh, for all sorts of reasons, but in the occasion that the PL account is much more active. But if their PL account is like legitimately their account, right? So we have Regis Altair, and then the person behind Regis Altair has a PL account on Instagram, and he just like posts photos of him. Like, yeah, I think those those are two different boundaries that shouldn't the be agency crossed. Account, unless they're if okay that with account it. Is smaller or have a similar following size. That's gonna ring some alarm bells. It's understandable if the PL account is way bigger because that could just mean you're in need of some quick money or some other reason. But if that is not the case, the reasons could vary. Maybe unfair contract, maybe management is being a douche, maybe the internal environment is not what they expected or wanted. And it's especially worse if those PL accounts are not just more active, but also complaining about the agency or alluding to their unhappiness and grievances. Similar to red flag number 5, if one or two VTubers do it, it's defensible, depending on the circumstances. Like, if the person is a notorious explosive Benhera, it's still eyebrow raising, but again, there are just some people that are difficult to work with. But if multiple people do it, especially those that are well respected and well known for being level headed and reasonable, maybe reconsider your options. Red flag number 7, graduations galore. What makes this different to red flag number 5 is not the time of the graduation, but the scale of the company, the members they have, and the frequency of the graduation. If the number of graduations a VTuber agency has relative to the number of talents they host is significant, that's no longer just a red flag, it's a red flag on fire. For example, the if whole a red light, agency brother. has had 15 talents but has had 7 graduations, leaving them with only 8 remaining, that's going to imply multiple things that I won't get into, but suffice to say, all those are going to be very negative. It's fine if it's like 15 talents and 3 graduations, 30 talents and 7 graduations. Relativity and context will be important, so if you do find your desired agency having an oddly significant amount of- I feel like 7 grads is still a lot. Um, it just depends on who's graduating and why. If this, if, it depends on how long they've been there, right? So if these are 7 graduations, and a lot of the people that are graduating recently got into the company, red flag. If it's seven graduations and it's someone that's been in the company a long time, like five years, and then there was somebody that was in there for two years, and then there's someone in there for one year, and it's like around different time periods, that's, that's fine. But if it's like, hey, these are all new people and they're all jumping ship, that's an obvious red flag right graduations. there. Look out for their updates and their previous posts around said graduations. It could tell you all you need to know about their management or if they have plans to change things up for the better. So yes, these are the red flags that I think you ought to look out for in a VTuber agency. At least, externally. Again, if you have more, do comment down below. I'll make a comment thread so anyone can see it. Next, we're going to deal with internal red flags. The kinds you might notice when you have one foot into the agency. Red flag number eight, they don't give you a contract. Give you a tight window in signing the contract or the contract is absolute whack. I've heard of some cases where some agencies literally don't give you a contract or give you only a couple days to sign it. That should not be the case as the VTuber themselves should be given ample time to review the contract or enough time to get a lawyer to look into it. 
Also, look into the work hours, the obligations, and the things they can provide for you. If it's too good to be true, then it most likely is. And if the membership or revenue percentages are anything below 50%, then oof. I'm not saying that anything below 50% is automatically a red flag, but I sure do hope you know what you're getting into and have a plan on how the agency can work for you. When someone violates a contract in an agency, I assign the blame on both parties. The company if the contract was predatory and the talent themselves for ignorantly signing a stupid contract without anyone well versed in contracts like a lawyer to read over it. But I do pin the blame more on the agency. I feel like you don't even really need a, a lawyer 100% to say whether this is a good or bad contract, bro. If you look at your contract and it says, yeah, you got to stay with us for one year, uh, you get 2% of all sales on merchandise. We don't give you any money for your projects and uh, you can't just graduate. You'll be put in a queue. And if you think you're going to graduate, uh, we can arbitrarily push back that graduation if somebody else wants to graduate before you. And then making it seem like you have to stay in there longer than your contract needs to be, that's obviously a bad contract to sign. Most people who want to join agencies, they're not exactly <laughs> business. You'll legit. make more they're than financial. You'll make more than what you make now. But it's like when you guys are signing a contract, you guys are legitimately selling yourselves. You're selling your souls. You're selling your body. You're selling your time. Is your time worth that extra couple hundred dollars? Sure, but what happens whenever you get sued by said company or they make you look bad or they terminate you out of nowhere because they don't like you anymore? Or what if you're being bullied inside the company? Blah, 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 right? So, you know, to each their own. Like, if you're legitimately not making anything and this contract comes across you for some reason and it was, I'm going to be homeless next month or I work like a slave for a year, then maybe work for a slave for a year. And then when that year contract runs out, then you say, oh, I'm going to extend or I'm going to go somewhere else. You know, it just it depends on what happens, you know. Literate, or they don't have the means to yeah, I know you're making a joke, but there's some people that are, are people. like, I'm just like saying it for some people that really think that. Wants to make content and stream. <laughs> yeah, I'm still alive, X49. Lots of businessmen that wants to start VTuber agencies kind of know this. The agency is supposed to protect them, not screw them over. So if the agency can't guarantee you that as you read over through your contracts, or worse, actually makes thinly veiled threats on things that will happen if you can't deliver, maybe don't. Red flag number 9. They have a major emphasis on lore rather than concept. Let me just splash you with the cold water. Lore is irrelevant in this industry, and the emphasis on that just makes me think you misunderstand the appeal of VTubing or your priorities are misplaced. The only people that can afford 5 minute lore videos are big VTubers and big agencies who can afford to spend as a huge chunk of change for a fun side project, or if they want to make a universe that they can make merch of or media franchises with. Unless the agency intends to have lore be used, like the agency's concept, generations, future members, or whatever is tied around a certain continuation of lore, then it could be excusable because at the very least the lore is getting used. It depends on the storytelling. If it's good storytelling and they actually plan on using the storytelling to further whatever their concept is, then yeah, sure, go for it. But if this is just some random ass company and they're like, yeah, you're a princess from whatever the fuck. And it's like, yeah, you can make princess jokes if you want to in the stream. But like, you know, if it doesn't go anywhere besides that, it's like, what's the point? I'm not talking about debut lore, you know, that trend where new VTubers put up a shit post or a gag about their origins. I think those are a hit or miss, but they're mostly okay. If the lore for a certain VTuber is one is that bright shield worth just an explanation for the concept and origin, then it's fine. In fact, that's how most people do it. That's how most people. Oh, bright shield and Kuna. No, yeah, I'm talking about it. fanfic and animation. I haven't seen them. To make I haven't seen their lore videos. Universes around your agency or around your character. If it's pages of twists and turns and sad backstories and world building and redemption arcs, you have priority issues. Fact of the matter is, concepts are more important to a generation or an agency rather than lore. Strong and interesting VTuber concepts are what will appeal to many fans and to people she who want cool. to become VTubers. Red flag number 10. They don't have a skeleton team or the team consists of only a few managers. I don't know if this issue speaks for itself, but just in case it doesn't, a VTuber agency needs- It also depends on how many people. So like FaZe Connect, 
I don't know how many members, uh, I, I mean, I don't know how many managers they have, but it seemed like, you know, beside, did they already launch their, I don't, I think they launched their new wave already, but it, like Phase Connect probably had what, like eight, I think people. So you have eight talents, you know, then I think four managers is fine. One manager can take care of two people. I think that's fine. But if it's like, bro, you got 30 talents and you only have 10 managers, like, no, bro, like, like that one's not going to work out. That one is not going to work out. It's multiple people to run. If it's new and only has a few members as, and as such only has one or two managers plus the CEO, then it's fine. But if it's like 10 VTubers and only two or three managers, that's going to be a bit of a problem. No, For an agency, not, you need work all out. sorts of staff, video teams, social media managers, general managers, all that sort of stuff. Yep. If the agency you intend to join has none of these and it has existed for quite a while, that's gonna be a bit of an issue. Because what will happen is that they'll add more people and they won't buy you hire more managers. For you. Yep. All the reaching out to artists and people to go for a project, all the video editing for clips and highlights, the schedule, the thumbnail creation, the brainstorming of ideas. Which you think you can do, and you might be able to do it for the first couple weeks, but constantly having to run your stream and then take care of everything else on the background like videos and thumbnails and shit like that and stuff that takes time right like video making sometimes it takes longer than a day but you have to also do your stream and then after that you need to make sure the people get paid and then you got to get a thumbnail for it who's going to do the thumbnail people got to get credited as well it's, it's a lot moderating. it's a That's lot be left to you and if that's the case, at that point, you might as well leave the agency or do it yourself. Changes if you're, creation. especially if you're funding at that it. Point, you're just being an indie with a corpo unnecessarily taking a massive chunk of your money. Yeah. Red flag number 11. The CEO or a lot of staff in the agency doesn't know jack shit about the industry. You'd be surprised how many people who try to get into the scene are actually completely out of touch with the VTuber industry. I think this is something. You have a good one, Syndex. Nice time by hanging out. The people handling them. Try to get them to say who their Roshis are, what their favorite agency is, why they decided to make the agency, and why them. What they think they can do better, what lessons they've learned, what mistakes they've seen from other agencies that they'll try their best to avoid. If their answers are incoherent, or they're just skirting around it, or they sound unsure or nervous, they don't know who the fuck Yago, the Gunrun, Riko Tazumi, or the other big players like Sakana or Aviel is. They don't know a lot of the big VTubing drama. They don't sound passionate and only know who Gura and Iron Mouse is. You better be hoping they got a consultant or an advisor that actually knows the industry. And if they do, try talking to those people too. VTubing has popped off. The most popular female in the world is the god queen herself, Pekora, according to stream charts. A lot of the heavy hitters in the female side of content creating both in JP and EN are VTubers. Because of these, fucking Silicon Valley types and soulless corporate execs are gonna be wanting to get a piece of that pie. They just want to make money without caring for the industry or its people in any way at all. True. This is going to be bad for you. They're not familiar with the industry. They don't know the process, what the trends are, what precedents are set, and all that other stuff. And because of this, they're not going to be able to navigate the industry very well. Again, this is defensible or excusable if there are one or two people in management that is actually in the know. Because at least they can guide those people in the right track, but sometimes this may not be enough. Red flag number 12. The CEO seems to favor only a couple members. Not to oh, that's you, that, yeah, that's bad. CEO that's just bad. regularly chilling with certain staff or certain members. Sometimes no, favoritism when it comes to marketing and pushing for uh, new experiences or collaborations. Certain personality types that mesh better with certain people. The favor that I'm talking about all has to do with assets, support, and models, and all other types of tangible things. This 3Ds is going to be so and a whole bunch of shit. Internal environment. There 100%. are a lot of stories where CEOs make VTuber agencies just to create their own harem. But sometimes... This problem isn't necessarily the CEO's fault. There can be cases, and there have been cases that I cannot specify, where the talent themselves are actually the ones to throw themselves to the CEO and appeal to their ego or give them lots of attention in an attempt to be favored. But it's the Well, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, that That's bound to happen. That's, that's ass-kissing, right? That's part of, like, any job, right? Um, if, if you guys aren't aware, if you're in like a leadership role, there are going to be people underneath you that are going to try and sometimes legitimately suck you off. 
to try and get ahead of the game. And it's your job as a leader to know when that's happening and cease that type of activity. And that comes down to like temptation and feelings and stuff. Cause some people, they say they fall in love with their boss, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it's very tricky, man. It's, it's very tricky. Very, very the tricky. CEO or senior staff members to watch out for this and be professional. Red flag number 13, delayed payments. If you hear a talent or staff or two getting delayed payments and the CEOs and managers answer in an unsatisfactory manner, then make the appropriate conclusion. At times, it implies that the company doesn't have a proper payment system. Or worst case scenario, the company is doing something else with that money. If you're unsure, <laughs> ask away. The standard oh, procedures man. for many agencies is that they're supposed to have their own MCNs. If not, then the business accounts for PayPal networks are linked into their channels. This is so the agency member's YouTube rev is going to be funneled into the agency's own AdSense account and then redistributed based on the percentages that was agreed in the contract. This also applies to donation channels and Twitch. Aside from a day or a couple days because of system interruptions or YouTube or Twitch just not sending the money at the usual time or PayPal being douchey and withholding funds, delayed payments are not so Bro, I hate when PayPal be doing that shit. ...was to happen. If the delay goes on for weeks or months, then the worst case scenario is definitely what's happening. This is also a check if the agency has the proper infrastructure to make the agency functional. Without an MCN or some other system that allows the agency to collect the talent's revenue, that's going to be a bit of a problem. At times, the agencies also delay payment to outside parties like the artists or composers. At times, the agencies don't even pay these people at all. Red flag number 14. Lack of agency collaborations. When the VTubers within the same agency don't collab that much, that's a big flaming red flag. It could mean a lot of things, from the talents not jiving well with each other, which could further imply that the talents are petty and you might not want to be genmates with people like that, or there is unresolved drama from within or management isn't stepping up. Whatever the actual reason is, this is bad. Especially if the talents prefer to solo stream or do frequent collaborations with other agency VTubers or indies, but not that much with the members that they're supposed to be colleagues with. Red flag number 15, drama. Self-explanatory, honestly, if the agency keeps having a shit ton of drama, and if you're a person that hates that sort of stuff, then yeah, maybe don't. And that's all for the red flags that I can think of. Again, let me know if you have other additions in the comment thread down below, so everyone will have an easier time accessing this information. I think this is this is a uh, I already hit a like on it, but yeah, I think that's enough red, bro. Like fifteen, bro, fifteen red flags, bro. Okay, there's fifteen red flags, and a company you want to sign up for has four of them. You probably shouldn't go. Okay, I think four is a lot. That, that, that's a lot, man. It's 15 and four of these. Yeah, yeah, you definitely need to watch out. So yeah, be careful what you guys are signing up for. Be careful. Uh, know why you're signing up. Know how long. Know what time. Of, uh, you know what day you get paid and, and know your hours and know a whole bunch of shit before y'all be signing up for stuff, man. That's kind of wild. Y'all just be signing up for shit. But yeah, I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.